Hi, it's Cindy. I have been on a ketogenic way of eating since 2020 in September, and I've lost 100 pounds. The journey to get there wasn't quite so easy. So I wanted to tell you about my experience with the gastric bypass that I decided to have in 2007. I was morbidly obese, facing high blood pressure, high cholesterol, a heart disease, diabetes, you name it, it was in my family. So I wanted to run from that and I didn't know any other way to do it. After trying so many other diets and everything else throughout the years, I decided with my husband input of doesn't matter what you do, I love you the way you are. I said, but I don't love myself, I need to do something. So I decided in 2007 to have a gastric bypass. The surgery was on a Monday and it went well. Uh, Tuesday night, however, I went in to use the restroom and I lost a lot of old, what they said was old blood through my bowels to the point where I had, I was listless. I was sleeping. My husband was there with me and I sent him home because all I wanted to do was sleep. And I felt like I needed to stay awake for him. Turned out I wound up having to get four units of blood because I had lost so much. And it was pretty scary. Just having to have a blood transfusion was enough to scare the heck out of me. But by Friday, everything was good. Actually, on Wednesday, my surgeon came in and he said, unfortunately, things like that do happen. But if anybody, I wouldn't have thought it would have happened to you because the surgery was the most perfect surgery. Nothing, no problems nothing. Well, Friday I was, I was released. Typically after a gastric bypass, you go home two days later, but because of what had happened, I had to stay the other two days. So everything was going okay. I was feeling okay. I was back to work by the next week. They did it laparoscopically and I had lost about 90 pounds. I had started at about 291. Never did get under the 200 mark. And then they tell you through all the support meetings or they told us that the groups that I was in to stay away from the white breads, eat the dark breads, stay away from white rice, eat brown rice, the regular pasta instead, eat the whole grain pasta instead, things like that, which I did faithfully. And then the weight started creeping back up. And I incorporate a little bit of chocolate in there. Most of the time it was sugar-free chocolates, but it was like, not the kind like now that are keto approved or what have you, but it was like the Whitman's sugar-free, which still had hidden sugars in it. But I didn't know any better and I partook in some of those, but mainly it was the foods they told me to eat. And like I said, the weight started gain, cre creeping back up little by little over the course of the years to follow. Well, about two years after my surgery, I started getting hypoglycemic episodes to where my blood sugars were in the 40s. I had never been diagnosed with any, any form of diabetes. And it was pretty scary. But with my husband being a type one diabetic, I knew, kind of knew signs of a low blood sugar from him. So I bought myself a meter and I started checking myself. I would get up in the morning and eat some cereal and it didn't matter if it was Special K, the Kashi Go Lean, if it was oatmeal, it, <coughs> excuse me, it didn't matter what it was. <coughs> and within two hours, my blood sugars would be really low. And I ran a store at the time and I was there alone all the time. And I had the uh, Lindor chocolates, so before I realized what was going on, I had, I would grab a piece of candy and within no time it was fine. Well, this went on for a while and I started looking into it and I found this blog by going on Google and, po and asking about low blood sugars after gastric bypass surgery. Well, I found this blog of post gastric bypass patients that had suffered the same symptoms as me, only far worse because they didn't catch it in time. Some had to have their pancreas removed. Some people had brain damage because of it. 
If any of you've had any low blood sugars, I'm talking like in the 40s, which is where I was a few times, you know the feeling in your head that you get. So the, the fact that people have suffered brain damage is understandable. And it also scared me <laughs> ridiculously. So I stopped eating the junk, um, the, the, the chocolates that I was eating. I stopped eating in the morning because it seemed like that was the only time it was affecting me is in the mornings. But I realized, I found out that I could eat late at night and it didn't bother me. It didn't matter what I ate, it didn't bother me. And when I had talked to my doctor about it, he had, no, had never heard of it. When I told him, and I pretty much self-diagnosed this hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia. He went and looked it up while I was sitting there in his office. He's, and he found, the same, found it the same way I did. He said, I think you're right. So I worked at it. And I worked at it. And I worked at it. And still the weight's creeping up because I'm still eating at night. Knowing that it wasn't going to affect me the same way it did other times of the day because your body's at rest then. Well, when my sister came to me in 2020, came to me and my other two sisters about keto, and I decided to get on board. I have not had any of those episodes unless I eat something off plan. Like one day, my husband and I went to Logan's Roadhouse and they automatically, it was one of our first times there and they bring the rolls to the table. Well, bread was my thing. And I uh, had a roll and boy, was it good. And then I looked up the number of carbs for that one roll and it was 56 and I'm like, I can't do this. So we, I think I did, I, I um, another time we went there, I think I ate two of them and stupidly and I didn't offset it with enough protein because if I was eating something carby and if I didn't get enough protein in that's that would be the adverse effect is the hypoglycemic episode and sure enough the day I ate two of them I felt like do the next <laughs> within a couple hours and it was just crazy so I'm like this there's a twofold reason why I need to stay on plan and pretty much be as strict as possible because this is so aggravating to me. If I had known in 2007 what I know now about keto, I would never have had that surgery. And the, the problems that I've had because of it, the, the hypoglycemic episodes, the, the blood loss in the beginning, just everything. I, I would say... <laughs> To anybody, if you know anyone out there that's even contemplating gastric bypass, unless it's a true medical emergency, give keto a try first because it is a game changer. And it has been for me. I, uh, I just, I can't stress enough because it was so scary for me and well for my husband too he sat there and watched me the night that I lost all this blood and just kind of fading because of all that I had lost and I was seriously so out of it and it was just crazy and with the blood with the blood loss I have O negative blood which is a rare blood type that I can donate blood for everybody However, not everybody can donate for me. So it was a godsend that they had enough blood, <laughs> that they had the blood in-house for me at the time. So, but anyway, back referral, basically, or my story. It's, it's um, there are other people out there who have gone through it. I've seen it. And if I can find that blog again, I'll try to post it in the description. It was pretty scary reading these people's stories. And, uh, but again, if you know anybody that's contemplating gastric bypass, please share this video with them. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will definitely get back and answer them. And,
button. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I hope you all have a great day.